Merry Christmas to you all. Special, um, special edition today. We're going to be actually making some lovely little doggy treats, little Christmas biscuits for the four-legged friends that you love. Unfortunately, we haven't got a four-legged friend, but I'm going to show you how to make them. And we actually got a lot of friends here in the UK that have got uh, four-legged friends, so they'll be getting these treats. And we've got Rick over here. Come, 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 Rick. Rick's going to be over here making mince pies. So we've got two mm -hmm. recipes going on at once. <laughs> Who's in? Nobody's talking. Now, the reason I, I, uh, the reason I want to show you how to make dog biscuits is because it is quite a nice thing. We can actually parcel them up and put them under the tree for the dog, maybe a little bit high so the dog doesn't just go and eat them up. But um, one of my subscribers, Ben, was saying to me today in a message that um, when he goes to buy... Uh, dog treats he finds it quite difficult sometimes to find dog treats that haven't got chemicals and food colorings artificial colorings in and things and it, they are so easy to make um, and I'm going to show you exactly what goes into them so if you like you can eat them yourself they're that healthy Amy says hi good day Amy and Lake District Bullet says good afternoon folks can't wait for the taste test at the end so I'm not sure whether that's the dog biscuits or the mince pies <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it's, uh, we've got some special little dog cutters. They're made by a company called um, uh, Jokumu. Now, I'm not endorsing them. I don't know anything about them, but they're kind of cool. We've got some little dog, bo little dog bone cutters. They're quite big, actually. Generally, if you look at um, uh, dog treats, they don't tend to be that big. So luckily, they've got a smaller one in there. But they've also got um, <laughs> a little doggy fire hydrant, which I thought was kind of cool. And on top of that, it's got a little dash hound. So you can see that if I put it at an angle. A little dash hound. Um, uh, a little, what be a Labrador of some yeah, sort. A bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, it's got a paw, dog paw, but it's a little bit big for what I'm looking for. So I might not uh, use that one, but the dog bone ones are cool. Not that a dog particularly is gonna care about whether or not it's dog bone shaped or fire hydrant shaped they're so just going to want to eat them late district bullet says definitely the dog biscuits absolutely and um just pass me that little dog biscuit in front of you michelle so here is a here is a dog biscuit that i carry around which i actually carried on the walk with me around uh, john o'groats land end and we used to feed them to dogs when we met them so we're going to be making something a little bit like this but uh, i don't know what's in this i'm guessing it's fairly fairly healthy but we'll absolutely know what what are in ours so Tim from Cheap Shop says, good day, Steve, Michelle and Rick. Good day, Cheap Shop, Tim. Mandy good says, day. hi. And Annie says, seven likes from Marius Globe. Beautiful. So over this side, my beautiful assistant, did, 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 Michelle, you can come while we're talking. <laughs> Michelle, come, my beautiful assistant, Rick and no. Michelle. Not me, I'm just reading comments. <laughs> Michelle's covering the comments. Rick's actually going to knock us up some, he's become a bit of a dab hand at mince pie making. Oh, yes. Delish, yes, the delish. resident mince pie man. He's, he, when we first, when we arrived here, he couldn't make a mince pie for Adam. Now he's knocking them up, he could do them in his sleep. And we're doing some special little um, puff pastry ones, Rick. So show, show the, uh, the... Yeah, we're going to be using this pre-made puff pastry sheet. It's just kind of a nice, easy way of uh, doing it. Without Look, too it's, much fuss. yeah, it's a lot of work making pe puff pastry, and this is a bit of a cheats mm. mince pie. But we are using our homemade. Um, this one is our veg. Oh, you're not quite in shot, Rick. Come around, around the table. This okay. is our homemade vegetable uh, mince meat. So this mm. one. This is the the non-vegetarian one. Oh, this is the non veggie one, is this it? This is the suet ah, one. Ah, okay, we're going with the suet one. All yeah, right, beautiful. Go. So, sorry, <laughs> we're going to treat ourselves to the suet one today. Um, yes. And what Rick does is he makes them up into a nice little parcel. And they don't take, how long did they take to cook? Oh, Rick? minutes. That's, yeah. Oh, Why well, not me? 10, 15, 15 or so? He's saying yeah. minutes to make, he's so good yeah. at it now. <laughs> <laughs> so, off camera, he keeps sneaking off the shop, but over here on, on this side, I'm going to have Rick. Um, doing that, and then if I if he if he does anything cool that I want to sort of show to you, I can I can scoot him in. But over here, well, Terra Razor says hi, Steve, and Juno F1 says I have a house pig called Manson, but I'm sure he'd love to try it too. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure your pig would eat them absolutely. Now we are using uh, this is a flour based um, bicky, but we get you can add a little bit of fruit into it we're definitely going to be adding a bit of peanut butter in there most dogs i know love a bit of peanut butter and um i kind of know this recipe off the top of my head i don't need to give the exact ingredients but i will do for you 
Uh, we're going to start in a little blender. I'm using a, a Nutribullet blender, but you could use a any sort of um, fast blender because the grains we're using are uh, quite coarse. Now, have you got those biscuits I made earlier, Michelle? When I was doing a little test run on these, um, we made some biscuits earlier on, and because I didn't bother blending them, they're actually, I'll, I'll show you them later on, but they're a little bit coarse, and I'm going, I want them to be a bit finer. So, hence, we're going to be using some Quaker's oats, just regular oatmeal, but I'm going to weigh it out on the scales. What are we looking at, Michelle? Was it about 75, 75 grams? 75 grams, that's after the whole meal So, 75 flour. grams of, of, no, the rolled oats. I'm oh, sorry, 50. She's not paying attention. <laughs> I'm trying to read 50 after 50 grams details. of rolled oats. 50 grams of porridge oats. There. So, this is just a regular porridge oats, not a um, fast oats. You want nice, uh, what do you call them, flat oats? Yeah, they're different, yeah. different names, but regular well, yeah, rolled porridge, oats, oats. porridge oats. So, 50 grams. Now you can actually not blend this. You can actually go straight away and just um, make the biscuits from the coarse ingredients. The only thing is, sometimes uh, it will make the biscuits a bit crumbly, so you, you'll feel that they, they break apart before you, you know, in your pocket before you can even give them um, to your pet. And that's the only reason we're really blending them. I'm going to make a little bit of a noise as well, unfortunately. Well, Sue Smith says everything you do is, is brilliant, Steve. Thanks. And Vicky says woohoo. <laughs> woohoo. And Thank Man you, Sue. Mandy says um, these biscuits look like they're going to be good. Exul says hi. And Shalimar says steel cut oats. That's another name for Steel them. cut, yeah. They're steel cut oats. They're whole oats. They're not actually a fast oat. Don't get any of those awful sort of uh, packets of fast oats. You want something that hasn't been pre processed uh, other than just flattened and dried. Um, so only about, I'm making a small batch. You can easily double this. 50 grams is how much in uh, ounces, Michelle? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I we, do we should have done this you in ounces. I'm this. so sorry, yes. everybody. I normally do that every time. Looks to me about sort it's of... about just over, oh, one and three quarter ounces. One and three quarter ounces. So you could make two ounces. We're going to be t um, tinkering with the, the, the final ingredient anyway with a little bit of uh, fruit and water just to get the right texture. So I've got 50 grams, one and three quarter ounces, two ounces if you like, into... The little Nutra bullet. Now Rick's Nutra bullet has grown some eyes. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened. So this is a special model, is it, Rick? Well, yeah. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the friendly model. It's the friendly model. You might notice something else. Some of you can look. You might notice something else with eyes on. Um, in shot, I can see it. You tell me if you can see it. A little bit of noise. Excuse me a second. <laughs> So we're just taking this oatmeal from, from very coarse to as fine as we can. I'll, I'll probably not overdo it for your ears. So, uh, yeah, that's good, good television. <laughs> Joe Wheeler says, hey, Steve, Rick and Michelle. Amy says, how are you? Joe, how are you, mate? Hey, Steve. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I've whisked that up until it's very fluffy, like a, like a powder, almost like a... A regular flower would be. Sue, Sue says, yay, that's my 10 seconds of fame. Ha ha. <laughs> Gordon says, hi, guys. And Ben says, hi, Steve. Ben, I was just talking about you, mate. You missed it. <laughs> so, so we've got oatmeal there. It's fairly... Now, if I get that out, you'll feel... You won't feel, but I can feel. That is fluffy, soft and fluffy. Yeah? Completely edible. Delicious. So, 50 grams of oatmeal, just whizzed up until it's it's like a fine flour. Now I've got here, this is some wholemeal, this is bread flour, and that's not a bad thing to use bread flour because the gluten will make the biscuits a little tougher. Uh, but you can use regular flour or plain flour, but um, I prefer you to use a wholemeal flour. It's just a, a little more flavoursome for the dogs. They can taste the difference. And we're going to put 75 grams of this into our blender or Nutribullet. Now Rick, do you want to actually just get in, mate? Yeah, I'll get on. Cracking on yeah, yeah. Crack on you. You know what to do, mate. Oh, so, 75 oh. grams is about two and a half ounces. Two and a half ounces. So yeah, go with the go with the measurements we've got, but you can be you can be a little bit out. It doesn't matter. Now Rick there, you've got Rick's got the uh, the puff pastry. Puff pastry. Pre -made puff pastry. Yeah. Now here in uh, in the UK, the puff pastry comes in this roll. Rick, just show that. So it comes in a like a roll, and it's fresh, and you keep it in the fridge. In Australia, we get it frozen in squares. 
very hard to find like that, but mm. I like that type it's, of puff pastry. It's quite sticky. You've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, it is quite gooey, isn't it? Mm. Sue John says, hi, you three. Um, Sue Smith hi, Sue. says, I'll shut up now and listen, watch, listen and learn. Love it. Beautiful. <laughs> and um, Rick will show you in a minute. When you do, Rick, will you show them what you're cutting the pastry with? It's mm -hmm. quite clever. I think it works oh, yeah. really well. So now I've put my oatmeal flour in there. It's already a flour, so it's not, um, it's not coarse but I still like to whiz it up a little bit because there's still some grit and texture in there and I want to get rid of that. It's not important, but I also like to make a little bit of noise. So, so Shalimar says, when I've made cat treats, I grind them down in the magic bullet. When it makes? Cat treats. Cat treats, yeah. It just, it, the magic bullet works quite well, but any, any decent blender will do the job. So we've got there now, uh, what have we got? Uh, 75, 125 grams of dried flour. Yep. 125 grams. That's about uh, three, three and a bit ounces. Michelle, you can check uh, do the maths for me it on was that. A one and three quarters and two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> really, there, uh, one and three quarters and two and a half. Yeah, one and three quarters and two and a half. Everybody. Go on. Is that four and a quarter? <laughs> Something like that. Rick, how are you doing on the maths? Uh, one and three quarters. Chris, wait, quiz. Time asking me. <laughs> So I'm putting my flour now just into a regular mixing bowl. Come on, someone put it up there for Michelle. Save. I think it's four and a quarter. It is I'm probably four and a wrong. Quarter. Joe says Rocco will love this. We'll try this either tomorrow if first time or on Boxing Day. Rocco will love this, and um, if Damon comes in at all as well, he's got the dogs. Anyone that comes to see us will be getting these dog treats, uh, and if I take them out with me, dogs on the streets will be getting them over Christmas. So it's kind of cool. So Rick, Rick has got the the pastry down there now. Look, he's got his roll of pastry. Okay, we're going to get six out of this. I think you get I think six. I get six, six yeah. yeah. So you get six quite squares. big ones then. So, so Rick's cutting yeah. it with a pizza wheel. Now the beauty of that is, if you've ever cut puff pastry before, um, you'll know that the knife, the knife tends to drag and it can snag the puff pastry. The pizza wheel, Shall I actually pop that down a little bit? I'll, I'm going to bring this down so you can see what Rick's doing and you can hear me and you can see what mm -hmm. I'm doing. So you can watch what Rick's doing, put him under pressure. Yeah. Yeah, for goodness sake, is Rick on dial-up not the best picture, lol? Not the best picture? Well, I think, uh, let me just check. Let me have a quick look. I think we're, um, no, we've got a good connection. Anyone else got a bad pic yeah. connection or is it? Um, is it just Gordon? Is it Gordon? Life yeah. with Anna says hi. Well, they are quite big, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they don't do, do too much because they'll but they'll they'll burst out. We're gonna we're gonna have some. I've got, giant still got to give him, I still still got to give him instructions. <laughs> <laughs> now, dogs my, dogs that I know love a bit of peanut butter. Be careful when you're using peanut butter though. Some peanut butters have a um, a preservative in them called uh, what is it called? Xylitol. 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 And uh, it's really bad for dogs. So look on the ingredients on the back and make sure that it doesn't have xylitol in the peanut butter, okay? Because it's really bad for dogs. Um, this one is a whole earth. It's a, it's a really natural, smooth peanut butter. I think it's better if you're using smooth. And we are going for 50 grams. 50 grams. And she says, it's a clear picture, but your heads are cut off. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Anne. <laughs> we are here. We are here. But you're watching, you see, you're watching the master at, at work over here. And you're watching me doing some bickies. So I'm going to go with 50 grams of peanut butter. I think that's already a little bit too much there. So let me just see. Well, oh, would you believe my scales just went to sleep just before I put that in. So let's zero that up again. Because <laughs> I was talking to you. So uh, life with Anna says hi, Ricky, and Anne says hello. Fifty-three. I'll, I'll take a tiny bit off there. Fifty grams. There you go. Beautiful. Fifty grams is one and three quarter ounces of peanut butter. Mmm, lovely, delicious. <laughs> oh, I know our dogs back home would love this. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Now, the other thing that you can put in, if you wish, is some uh, apple puree. Banana puree, if you've got some ripe bananas, dogs actually do love that little bit of sweetness. We're not putting any, any horrible human sweeteners in here, which are really bad for dogs. But a little bit of sweetness from some apples, a little bit of sweetness from some overripe bananas. We're not putting all this in, just a, just a little bit to add some flavour. Um, it's good for the dogs uh, in moderation, okay? 
<laughs> so Rick's doing well over there. Look, just show the little, the first little parcel, Rick. Oh, so he's made he's what skinny. looks like a little Eccles cake out of puff pastry. Now, when he, when you bake those, they puff up, like, and then you're going to Rick will dust them over with, with some um, icing, icing sugar. sugar, powdered sugar, confectionery sugar. Moon over Miami says hello to me. Hello, Moon over Miami. So what I'm going to do is just mm. add. A couple of maybe maybe a dessert spoon of of uh, pureed apple into this, just to treat the dog. Just to add a little bit of sweetener in there. Do not add any sugars or stevia or anything ridiculous. Dogs don't need the sweeteners. They they, they don't need it. Um, they love. They can taste flavors that we we barely can perceive. They do like an egg. So and this will actually help bind our ingredients so I am going to just break a whole egg into here and this will help when we bake the cookies the dog cookies just to sort of bind them together okay, pop that over there I should have put that egg in after I've mixed the flour and the peanut butter together then I'll just get a fork the um, only last ingredients I'm going to put is some oil but I'll do that in a minute I know Michelle <laughs> thinks I've forgotten but I haven't but I just want to get this to start to bind together so I'm going to whisk the egg just at the corner of the flour before um, folding it through. And this will probably be a little dry, this mixture. If it is, we can add, right, I'm bringing the fruit in there now. I'm bringing the peanut butter in there now. We can add a tiny splash, literally maybe half a tablespoon of um, water just to bind it together. Quick, you see how quickly that's starting to, to bind? And, still got oil to go in, you? and there's still going to be a little bit of coconut oil because coconut oil is good for dogs. It's good for their teeth. It's good for their breath. It's good for the freshness. It's good for the for the taste. Mm -hmm. And I mean the, the the solid coconut oils that you get. And again, check there are no weird preservatives in any of these ingredients. We want to make something both our dogs can enjoy, and um, and we can enjoy. So, so uh, Moon Over Man says, hello, Michelle and Steve. Hi to, hi to Rick, too. Missed you guys. Good day, Mark. How are you? Life with Anna says, happy birthday to me. <laughs> happy birthday to you. We can play that on the ukulele later on. <laughs> and Sue John says, what's Rick making? Came in late. Sue, Rick is... is, is... What are you making, Rick? Go um, on. Mince pies. Well, kind of pies. What are they? They're not little packets, aren't they? Uh, they are another mince pie, so mince they're still pies. a pie. Yeah. They're beautiful. Look at this. Uh, oh, we've all got clean hands, but look, beautiful, uh, looks like a little um, um, Eccles cake, but it mm -hmm. hasn't got uh, currants in it, it's got two, two left, handmade two mince meat. Mm -hmm. And we, we've got a, an oven, which I'm just going to actually preheat up to 180 degrees Celsius, and then Rick's going to pop those in whilst I continue to make the, uh, the doggy biscuits, and, um, and then we'll have a mince pie after this. <laughs> Possibly even a doggy biscuit. Now I've got coconut oil. This was actually solid. It, even at room temperature, this was set like a block. Um, but I've warmed it in the microwave just for 30 seconds. And I want to add about a tablespoon of this oil into my mix. The Moon Over Miami says, are these biscuits suitable for cats too? I, I, I see no reason why not. I need to double check because I've never tried peanut butter on cats. Um, so that's the only thing I'd need to check. Is that mom saying that? Yeah. Uh, mom, should you just check for me? Maybe one of you will check. I would say they probably are perfectly suitable for cats. And I've been thinking about doing a little sort of cat treat video anyway, because we, we're a big cat family. Well, this is feeling perfect, Michelle. I don't even think I'm probably going to need to add any extra water into this. Look at the, the dough. It's yeah, that's much smoother. It's not it? too sticky. Um, everything's come together. It actually looks like and smells a little bit like a big block of peanut butter. Now, there's nothing untoward in here. There's a raw egg in there, so that could kill you. But I'm going to... Mmm, that is good. So he's making us cookies. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, be careful with raw, raw eggs. Actually, the eggs in the UK are salmonella-free. Um, I think pretty much all of them are salmonella free because the government actually went uh, the extra mile and started to uh, to treat the eggs at source. So I think, I don't know if it's all eggs, but I think most eggs in the UK are yeah. salmonella free. Last Could one, be wrong. Rick, Rick's done the last one. Oh, yeah, that's all. I'll put those in, shall I? 
Dust a little. Yes, thank you, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So nice Ben says all the, all the eggs with a lion mark. Get them right in close, Rick, so everyone can see. There you go. Look, Look at, at that. those. Mm -hmm. Ready to go in the oven. Beautiful. But what's that? 180, isn't it? 180, and we're going to bake them for about uh, 15, 15, 20 minutes yeah. at the most. I'll watch that. Okay. We've got timer on that. Uh, we'll watch the clock because oh, yeah, I'll put yeah. them on my phone. Will you? Okay. Yeah. So, right. Sue John said, I don't think they will like them. I have six cats, one dog, and one husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that when I make these cookies normally, I'm quite happy to eat them myself. They're, they're, they've got no, no real sweetener in them, which is a little bit odd. But then, if you think of something like an oat biscuit, a Scottish oat biscuit. <laughs> what are you up to, Rick? Are you looking for a new sound? I'm looking for a sound for an alarm. Otherwise it's just stopped playing. <laughs> uh, ben wants me to repeat what he said so that Steve hears it. It's only the eggs with the lion mark on that are guaranteed to be salmonella free. Sal Sal salmonella, salmonella free. You're right, Ben. Um, with the lion, the British lion mark on them, they are salmonella free. Um, so, but yeah. there are a lot of eggs that do have that little print on them. But for this, we're baking these, so they're all salmonella free. So Mary says, how nice of you to think of our fairy friends. I'm going to make these biscuits for Alfie, my wee Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu. Oh, we were, uh, we were watching a, a programme the other day where the lady had a gorgeous little Shih Tzu. Uh, pretty oh, sorry, that's thing, Mandy said that, sorry. Oh, Mandy, sorry. Yeah. And it was Mary that said, nice of you to think about the fairy friends, which you think they might be too hard for cats to eat. My mother used to have a Shih Tzu many years ago. Uh -huh. It was called Lucky. <laughs> it had no teeth, no. it was blind, yeah. and kept walking into things. <laughs> so we called it lucky. <laughs> now I don't want to roll this too thin, because sometimes, you know, the dogs like quite... Depending on, depending on your dogs, you know, if you've got little chihuahuas or shih tzus or a small dog, you might want to actually roll this a little bit thinner. If you're giving it to dogs, Labradors, Alsatians, larger breeds of dogs, then you might want to have a fairly sort of chunky. But do, do remember, these will rise a little bit as well. And uh, as I say, I've got this little, little dog biscuit cut here. And I'm just going to cut through that. Mr. John says, I've got an Alfie. He's a multi-poo. OK. Our daughter's got an Alfie and that's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. We've got a little doggy-shaped biscuit. I'm going to lay them onto a, a silpat mat and fortunately very fortunately for us it's exactly the same baking temperature as rick's mince pies <laughs> so i'm just going to uh have a little work on these while michelle does some questions so gordon says my dog buster the bar steward is watching lol <laughs> <laughs> now um another thing i was going to say you can as long as it's pure beetroot juice can colour these as well so you can actually put beetroot juice but be careful that it's pure beetroot juice and it's not something with vinegar in or something so so if you want to go colours you can also add um, spinach uh, you can add uh, you know richer coloured uh, vegetables to, if you want to get some green coloured treats uh, you could add carrot grated carrot in with dogs dogs love carrot uh, raw carrots really good for dogs as well so you can add carrot in here and get all sorts of different colors and Mandy um, says Alfie's the most popular dog name in the UK all right <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting to know there you go what's it all about Alfie <laughs> <laughs> what's that all about <laughs> so I'm just cutting these out there you go Pop popping them onto my baking sheet now I might go with a little cool little dash hound here he's a bit big it's going to take half of half of my cookie mix but why not little dash hound that's for a bigger dog well the dash hounds aren't big are they <laughs> no it's a bit inappropriate for a dash hound who's a little fella yeah a little girl but there you go look at that little dash hound we'll pop that in there as well it looks kind of cute it's for christmas so they can have it's a bigger for christmas one, aren't they? but i don't really want the alsatians getting used to eating dash hounds <laughs> um fire how about hydrant. a little fire hydrant let's go with that that's kind of cool so a little fire hydrant that could be problematic that could be problematic don't want your dogs weeing up your biscuits so but it's kind of cool i think i stick with the bones <laughs> i think i stick with the bones as well we've got a little fire hydrant though which actually looks like a little christmas tree in a way Where's my little bone cutter? There she is. So I'm going to carry on. 
cutting these off. Rick's having a little sabbatical. He's going to go off and do a... Yeah. He's actually doing an edit for his... Uh, when will it be up, Rick? Maybe tomorrow? Oh, possibly late tonight. Yeah, late tonight. Tomorrow, Rick's got a, a cool video going up on his channel. So uh, we've got a little, uh, a little shout out on Facebook when it goes up so you guys can, can check it out. But actually, no pressure there, Rick, just in case, <laughs> yeah. just in case it doesn't come out, because he hasn't actually finished editing it yet. So, we're just cutting out the dog biscuits. You were maybe going to make some little balls. Ah, well, I do that with the... the with I was going to do that with the crumbs. I haven't got a lot left, but... Hasn't no, it? but... Sh Shannon, I said, I bought a floppy fish USB charged cat toy for Christmas and a battery-powered spinning butterfly. That's wow. For, that's for her cat. How can you possibly know that if it's if it's not Christmas yet? <laughs> Surely Santa hasn't taken it out of the packet. And Sue John says, you done all your food shopping for Christmas? Pretty much, yes, yeah, yeah, Sue John. Yeah. Now, Michelle just reminded me, but um, I hadn't forgotten actually, but <laughs> all the little scraps, you know, rather than roll it out again and make um, more bone uh, cookies, what I'm just going to do is just roll them into little little balls because you know sometimes you want just some little snacks in your in your pocket if you're going for a walk with a dog you want it to you know you're trying to train it to do something so you can make little shapes you know you can just take each bit of pastry just roll actually it's it's quite short this pastry maybe if I left it a little bit longer so I'm just going to use the scraps to make some little paste little cookie balls and we can just pop those on there as well um yeah they make little um Training treats. Training treats. You can could go even smaller, you know. Yeah. Just make them just a little bit, yeah. depending on on which 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 variety of doggy you're <laughs> making them for. Now you could make a whole bunch of these. You could make them different colours. You could make, uh, you know, with some some spinach or with some um, carrots, um, and then you could they could look kind of pretty. Uh, we were thinking of putting them into some little decorative bags or little stockings and then hanging them up in the tree. Hopefully the dogs won't get at them. And... Yeah, high enough so they can't smell them. <laughs> yes. Do not be putting chocolate yeah. or cocoa or anything like that into these sort of cookies. It's really bad for dogs, you know. Um, I remember once, some, some recently, we had a friend who had some dogs that got into the Easter, yeah. uh, would have probably been Easter time, into the Easter chocolates. Now... Fortunately, most of the sort of modern day sweet Easter egg chocolates have got very little um, cocoa in them. So it was, it was actually all right. Uh, the dog had, had no issues at all. It's those rich dark chocolates, you know, the Bourneville dog ch chocolates, the high cocoa chocolates that are really dangerous for dogs. So don't go putting chocolate in here. And also, like I said earlier on, dogs don't really need the sweetness, you know. They, they don't, you're doing that for you. <laughs> You're doing that for you. You're not doing it for your dog. Your dog. You don't want a dog that starts to become dependent on um, on sweet things. It's not a good idea. Then you're going to have a fat little dog, and you're going to end up with all sorts of uh, veterinary issues and things coming <laughs> coming into the future. We so. know because the video froze. The audio is okay there. Well, mine's okay, so maybe it just needs to refresh it, and it will. Um... Mom's. Hopefully, it's all right. Yep, yeah, I, and, unless unless. Uh, more, more, more of you say that, Mom's. I, I, I'm guessing it's possibly just on your side. Yeah. Gordon anyone else? says the video is good. All right. <laughs> and you were complaining before, Gordon. <laughs> yes, Gordon, constantly oh, complaining. Oh, the video's okay now. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm actually gonna roll this last. I like the little Not bones. I like the little saying? bones. <laughs> she's, she's having a go. Oh uh, no! Already. I'm just watching from here. It, when he's talking, he gets carried away. <laughs> Carried away. Carried away. So you can give him a thumbs up for the size of the thickness of his dough. <laughs> it's exactly the same thickness as the last one, well, if not right. just a tiny bit thicker. Well, it is absolutely just a tiny bit thicker. So I'm see. going back to the little doggy bones. I like them. They look good when they're cooked. Yeah, Gordon's going on to the naughty step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't go banning him, Ben. No. Don't go banning him, Ben. <laughs> Oh, I can smell the mince pies. The mince pies are coming along. Ooh. Look at that. He has a whole tray here of doggy treats. Now, is it, as I say, it's easy to double up this recipe if you're making a big batch. I would, actually. If I had a little doggy with me, which we don't have at the moment, unfortunately, um, uh, I would probably make a much bigger batch because you can bake as many as you like and uh, they last for pretty much indefinitely. Um, once these are cooked... Yeah, Moon Over Miami says, these cookies were my great gifts to doggy owner 
paper is cool. Absolutely, they would. And you could put a little, you could put a little group of them, put a bit of red ribbon around them, or yeah. find a nice little festive packet, and you can tell them exactly what's on them. You can even print a little label if you want, and to you know let people know exactly what's inside them, so they know they're natural. Um, Rick and I were actually eating them the other day with a little bit of cheese on them. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it, Rick. Well, actually, the dogs will probably like it with a little bit of cheese because they yes. like cheese, don't they? You know, cheese and crackers there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll put that one in. So, here we go. We've got now a tray of... Can you see them? So, some little flat um, bone-shaped cookies. I've got my dash hound, a fire hydrant, and a few little balls of cookie into my oven and I want to bake them again for about 15 minutes. You don't let them go too dark. So uh, 180, that's 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to cook them for yeah, about 15, 15 minutes at the minutes. most, I would say. So pop that in there alongside. Oh, the mince pies are smelling delicious. <laughs> well done, Rick. I will, I will pass on your compliments, audience. Yes. To Rick on his mince pies. Oh, and Mandy says a great idea to give the dog biscuits to animal charities. Yes, if you want, you could make batch and drop them to animal charities. Now, I, I think one of the things. Sorry, I'm washing up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Force the habit. You know what it's like. You know what it's like, lads. Eh? When you're in the kitchen, you get that urge to do the washing up. All, all men are the same. Was that a hint? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> all men are the same. I know. I know, girls. It's a. Isn't it a pain? <laughs> men in the kitchen washing up all the time, <laughs> driving nuts. Yeah, it? Ben said, yeah. Tell Rick off for washing up, but do it yourself, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to wipe this side down a little bit. Yes, yeah, just so we can put some things down. Nothing worse than a domestic man, is there? <laughs> hey. Oh, Neil wants to know, will they go with your fantastic brown sauce I've made? <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, the brown sauce has, has too much sugar in it for dogs. They really, and, and it would be too, uh, no, it wouldn't be good for dogs. But it might be nice if he's having my, it for himself. <laughs> oh, yeah, for yourself, it, it would be perfectly good. Yes, as Ben said, he might have meant for humans. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um... As you were saying, Ben, I, I mentioned, I don't think you were in, but you, you mentioned when you were looking for dog treats uh, in the UK, that it's hard to know what's inside them, whether there's colourings in there, additives. Surely they're probably going to be reasonably healthy because um, uh, you would imagine they're not selling dog treats that have got any, any sort of evil ingredients into them. But the one thing you will find is that when you make them like this, you, you can use the better quality ingredients. So you can use, you know, good quality flowers, good quality peanut butters, uh, good quality fruit and things. Um, don't be tempted, as I say, to put uh, anything sweet in there, even honey. It's just, it's just not necessary. Dogs, dogs absolutely love the taste of uh, peanut butter. It's a great, that's an unsweetened peanut butter, by the way, so it won't have any sugar in it. It's just peanuts, isn't it? Just peanuts, uh, which is all peanut butter should be. One thing you can also use, which I was going to do today, is take a slightly overripe banana, and for a batch that we've done here, maybe half a ripe banana, or double up your quantity, and just put banana into it. Um, dogs won't ordinarily, I don't know if your dogs will, but I've, been, I, I've not found dogs ordinarily uh, woof, woof down a banana, but they do like it mixed in with their food and, and it doesn't harm. Uh, carrots, carrots are brilliant. So, um, the carrots, they love it, don't they? I would just grate the carrots, grate them in a grater and actually mix them in with that and, 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 and make a, a, a carrot flavored one. You could actually slightly cook them and mash them into a, a puree as well, which would work. <sighs> <laughs> Now we've so we go. go. got to wait 20 minutes, so, uh, <laughs> Rick. Five minutes, we've got uh, about four minutes away. I was wondering whether we, whether we had a, a, a little tipple, Rick. Well, we had a little tipple, maybe, an, maybe a well, Aussie wine? Yeah, give it a try. Yeah. yeah. We've got a bottle of good Australian yellowtail wine. This is a um, 
Uh, Gordon um, says, "Where's um, the alcohol?" A Merlot. <laughs> he, he read your um, read your mind there. I've got a I've got a couple of nice reds for over Christmas. Uh, we've got the Yellowtail. We've got a couple of other good Australian red wines. Uh, I know it's bad. I'm in England. I'm buying Australian wines, but uh, so Joe says, "I'm on the Baileys today." Ha ha! I love that wine you have, though. Uh, Rick and I had Baileys yesterday, mm -hmm. and we're trying to pace ourselves because we both don't really drink, do we, Rick? Not big drinkers, no. Do you want a little bit of red? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I won't have time to. Now it's a good Australian wine, so it's a, it's a twist off lid. Yeah. <laughs> That'll upset my my my, uh, my American friends. A little twist off. In Australia, all of our bottles, all of our bottles, without exception, have twist off lids. Even if they're really good quality wines, they have a they have a twist off lid. It takes a lot of Europeans some time to get their head around that because they always tend to associate rubbish wines with twist off lids. But it's just that was a law that was introduced probably about four, oh, fifteen, eighteen years ago in, in Australia. There'd be no more uh, cork used, um, and uh, it really doesn't affect the quality of the wine. So, mm. and we're going with it. So, Sue John says Alfie loves carrots and broccoli stems, oh, and apples. Yes, well, are they, are they <laughs> <laughs> and Mandy says, I'm prepping espresso martinis. And Bruno Sorry, Miami Rick, says, right? Rick's still got some work to do, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want to get him. He'll, if he finishes all this, he'd be just sat in the court snoring in the chair in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> cheers. cheers, mate. Cheers, Michelle. Yes, chin chin. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> she's got her own special, special drink over there. <laughs> Moon over Miami says they sell this, um, this Australian wine here in Miami. I love their Merlot too. Ooh, how's that? It's not bad, is it's it? It's not bad. Australian wine, mate. That's, uh, consider it's not left, it's been left it's to breathe. Uh, that's, it, that's it, that's it, this is Ever Ready. Mm. This is the, uh, the Duracell of wines, Ever Ready. Mm. Um, just quickly, are the mince pies okay? Just uh, checking, we've about a minute to go. Okay. And Shalimar says, I'm sitting here shucking oh, walnuts. To make four cranberry walnut orange loaves, I should have purchased a bag of walnut pieces yeah. instead, but I got eight pounds of walnuts in the shell for 88 cents a pound. Shalimar. Put, a tea, put your teeth in, Shalimar, if you're shucking walnuts. <laughs> 88 <laughs> cents shucking a pound. Means, shucking means taking That's the shells off, but value, it's the way Michelle it? says them, it's shucking, shucking walnuts. <laughs> 88 pence a pound. Cents Cents. A pound. a pound. I think that's very good. Yeah, I think that's yes. very good. Yes. Um... And Muno Mammy says, Cheers, nice happy Christmas Eve Eve. Merry Christmas. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we've got our first of our parties, haven't we? Oh, Rick? yeah, it's tonight. I think we're on tonight. No, no, we? no, I mean uh, proper parties. Oh, we? yes. Oh, Rick, you Rick, mean Rick, Rick online, or... online parties. We've actually got our first of our Christmas guests coming, and we've got a ham. We've done a Christmas ham. We're going to be doing all sorts of uh, treats, and, and, and we're probably going to do some more mince pies. We're going to mm -hmm. be doing... Um, some cheeses. We're actually going to be doing Rick's idea, not mine. Rick's idea. I take no, I take no responsibility for this. Where are the toothpicks, Rick? Oh, they're oh. just, just, <laughs> just here. Just yeah, here. We, we're going. We're going. <laughs> we're going retro eighties. We got some toothpicks, and Rick said to me, "No, he didn't. We came. We did this for a laugh. It was really. Steve's come, idea. Come on, come on." <laughs> We did this for It life. was Steve's idea. Yeah, we're going <laughs> retro. We're actually going to be putting little silver skin. Um, they won't watch your, your, your lot, will they? No, we're going to... <laughs> no. no, they might do. If you're watching this, and anyone's, any, any of the people that are coming tomorrow watch this, <laughs> we're not doing this really. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we're going to get some um, little silver skin uh, pickled, onions. pickled onions and stick them on cocktail sticks with little bits, little cubes of cheese. <laughs> there will be no pineapple. No pineapple. There will be no pineapple. Oh, shucks, guys. <laughs> yeah, we thought we'd have a laugh. We, we, we're going to possibly make some volivants. Oh, yeah, we've got cases, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cases. volivants. We've got. Um, you said that with a C. I know. <laughs> it's, it's so 80s, isn't it? Is it 80s 70s. or 90s or 70s. 70s, is it? Gordon says hot dog. Maybe some little. Uh, hot dog sausages. We haven't got, unfortunately, we haven't got uh, um, uh, an eight, a, uh, grapefruit. a grapefruit to stick them into, but we have got half a watermelon, so they might they may be all stuffed like a porcupine. So that's for tomorrow. That's kind of cool. Homemade, all homemade stuff. For Christmas Day, what are you guys having for Christmas Day? What is going to be your main meat or meats for Christmas Day? Um, I'll tell you what we've got, and... Uh, when you've told us what you've got. When you've told us. You show me yours and I'll show 
How's that going? It shows, I'll show you mine. Yes. So Mandy says, anything with puff pastry is good in my book. Sue John says, a capon. Gordon Sue, says, you told me about the capon before, yes. Gordon says, a turkey think, crown. And I think Rick, very slightly in the back, very subtly, went like this. <laughs> put, put, put a cape on. And put a cape on. And none of us, he, he was so upset afterwards. So if you can just give the thumbs up for Rick's cape on joke and a little clap. Which we all missed last time. I don't think any of you caught it. Look at that. So, so, that timer went to zero and didn't ping. Did ping. Didn't ping on you. So Moon Evermore says, Lordy. I'm serving lamb shank. Oh, delicious. Uh, I'd love that. Two minutes. Would love. two minutes. Two minutes. Michelle would love lamb shank. She's a big lamb fan. But we actually haven't got lamb shank. Sorry, Michelle. I know. We have other meats instead. We have uh, a goose. We're going to be doing roast goose which is the, the, the traditional uh, meat for Christmas, uh, British meat anyway, and Australian and probably a few other countries in the world. Uh, we're going to be having a ham, uh, a glazed honey and um, mustard glazed ham. Uh, and we're going to be having a beautiful piece of beef as well, a uh, ribeye roll of beef. As if that wasn't enough. And there's we're, only three of us. And there's only three of us. <laughs> uh, we're going to be having parsnips and swede and carrot, and we're going to have roast potatoes, and we're going to be chestnuts. having chestnut stuffing. We're going to have be, be having cranberry stuffing, cram, homemade cranberry sauce, sage and onion stuffing. What else? Wait, cuddly sauce. toy. Cuddly <laughs> toy. Cuddly <laughs> toy. Cuddly <laughs> toy. Brussels sprouts. Caravan, Brussels Brussels sprouts. sprouts <laughs> white sauce. Homemade grape, beautiful homemade grape. That will be made from the juices of the of the goose and the uh, and the, the beef. Um, so Sue Johns gave a thumbs up, and Mandy says turkey for two jealous? as can't travel to London to see my family. And well, we're only one more than two, and we're having the meal <laughs> as big as any family of eight would probably have. <laughs> uh, Yorkshire puddings, Yorkshire oh, puddings. Yeah, yeah. Yorkshire puddings. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. do Yorkshire puddings. Roast puddings? Roast potatoes. potatoes. Oh, yes. Uh, All done roasted in duck fat. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't wait to try that. Salivating, thinking about it, Rick. Mm. How are your mince pies doing? Are they there yet? 30 God. seconds. Oh, Shalimar says, UK Back in Time for Christmas is an interesting programme to watch. 1940s Christmas with stuffed ox heart. Ah, oh, beautiful wow. stuff. I love ox heart. Um, it, I'm probably the only one in the room that does that. <laughs> it sounds awful. Gordon it does says, sound awful. Oh, yeah, oh, awful. Boom, boom. Oh, boom, boom. Gordon says, can't buy cranberry sauce up here, all sold out. You have to make your own, Gordon. He tells me about dad jokes. He sits there and about, he's got a cape on. He says, oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> you, you actually need one of those little monkeys on your back going... <laughs> Skeeter Lewis says, my beagle biggles says, yes, please. Oh, they look good. They look good. A little, a little bit anemic. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. No, they're good. They're good. Colour's good. Up onto there, that'll if you want to. Yeah. So, yes. Are we going to dust them while they're hot? We'll let them cool a little bit. Just. It's just behind there. They look good. They look good. Maybe hot. Hot. Maybe bring the camera to the tray. Oh no! Look at that. Popped up beautifully. Sue John says, what's the best way to cook roast potatoes, please? Um, I like to cook them alongside the meat if I can, Sue John, so I get the meat juices, but I also like to actually have them in a tray with, with goose fat in them. You can parboil the potatoes. So for roast potatoes, I like them to be reasonably small, not, not when I say small. Um, if you make them too big, the beautiful part of a roast potato is the outer side, right? It's like cutting the end off a piece of meat. It's, it's all cut. So the smaller the potatoes, the more outside skin you get, the more flavour you get. So don't do them too small. Um, yeah. How do you say <laughs> how big? Uh, about the size of a half a mince pie. Um, and then Put them into the tray, but don't forget to baste. A lot of people forget to baste um, roast potatoes. You know, don't have them in a dry tray with a little bit of oil. Yes, go on, mate. You bring them in for a... Rick, 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 oh, yes. wants, Rick wants to show off his mince pies. So come on, everybody. <laughs> this is where, thumbs up. This is where I tilt them to the camera. Yeah, they all slide off. Have we, got, have, we got a, have we got a star? Let me get them a bit closer there. Come on, Rick. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yes. 
Beautiful. Um, people forget to roast, uh, to baste their roast potatoes. Take that fat, take that um, uh, goose fat, or if you're just using any, and baste over the roast potatoes. It really makes a huge difference. The skins get all sizzly. Turn them over. Don't forget to turn them while roasting. Um, you want to get those the surface of the potatoes really beautiful. If you like a fluffy outside to your roast potatoes, if you like them fluffy and how, how would you describe it, Michelle? Fluffy? Fluffy, yeah. If you like that fluffy yeah, outside, fluffy. then you need to boil them first. Um, really just parboil them, almost blanch them. So just the outside of the potato is cooked. And then you need to get yourself a little fork and you have to sort of, you know, just scour up the surface of the potatoes before you roast them. I actually don't like them like that. I know it's a, it's a way people tend to sort of go, you know, it, it absorbs the oil and it, it makes them all fluffy and crisp and a lot of chefs think that's the best way but I actually quite like a firm like almost like a like a, uh, a jacket potato skin on the outside of my potatoes so I want them fairly flat and and really caramelized so it depends what you like really if you like that sort of fluffy outside all mm -hmm. sort of full Sue, up Sue's asking what about putting flour on the parboiled potatoes that's mm -hmm. another way but it's no, not necessary it's it? really not necessary if you do that you're just going you're adding one 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 limited flavour because flour itself is not going to bring anything to the party, really. And your cookie's okay. Ah, uh, well, my cookie's okay. <laughs> also, shall I put a glaze on these? Um, no, we're going to go with the... Uh, Just over there in the corner. No, because he's uh, <laughs> it's, it's getting all cheffy on me now. <laughs> if you going, want going, to, Rick, you can do what you like, mate. Going back but to I the mince, just, uh, mince pies, Ben sure take, said he took one. Yeah, was having a little, little discussion there. Yeah, Rick's going to have a put a glaze on it. You remember what we did with it? Well, you remember what we did with the um, Nutella tear and share bread that we made on the show uh, last week, week before? Uh, Rick's going to do that to our mince pie, so extra opulence. No, no, I don't like flour on the outside of potatoes. Uh, Sue, was it? Yes, yeah. Mandy says, semolina coating, fantastic, well according to Nigella. Uh, yeah, they're not the smartest uh, cookies in the box, Nigella extra, and people like that. You, you, what they don't understand is just how good a potato tastes on its own if it's cooked, if it's if it's done well. It's the fact that you cook it in that can add a lot of flavour to the potato. Um, if your if your um, if your characters like Nigella and 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 Jamie, they're just desperately grasping at sort of ideas that they can just because otherwise it's just a, uh, a a baked potato. And you know the problem. With a baked potato is uh, sorry. With a roast potato, is it tastes good, right? A good r roast potato tastes good, but but it's too simple. They want to try and sort of jazz it up, you know. But a bit of coconut flour. I could tell you, you know, dust it in a little coconut flour. Get some coconut flavour. Dust it in a little oatmeal flour. Get a little little, little this and that. But but it's Christmas time, right? We want tradition. We want things to taste great. So if you like a fluffy outside, parboil them. If you want them extra fluffy, just use a fork and just gently mark. The surface of the, but you'll see as you touch the surface, it just breaks open and fluffs up. Then roast them. It's a little bit of extra work for me. Yep. I don't even parboil them; they go straight in the oven with the meats and things, and I, I baste them over with the juices as it's cooking. So the meat juices, and they are going to be the best uh, roasters that you'll have. That's that's the way I do. As Mandy them. said, she agrees with you. Like a plain and simple roast spud. Yeah, I, I, I might want to do something else with a roast spud, but not for Christmas Day. It's, it's you know, I want things to be traditionally fantastic. So going back to when Rick was showing the mince pies, Ben took five and says, oops, sorry, you seem to have run out. <laughs> um, and Sue says, what if you can't get goose fat tried today but couldn't find any? Um, then you can use lard or you can just use a little bit of vegetable oil, worst case scenario, just a bit of vegetable oil. You will find if you're cooking something, if you're doing a pork uh, dish, if you're doing any pork at all, that produces its own renders its own fats off so that can be fine we are actually doing a goose so we'll actually be getting lots of extra goose fat heaps of, of goose fat but look at what he's doing the masters at work look at that mm -hmm. yes life with anna says are you going to eat on the live uh we are going to be eating dog biscuits <laughs> yeah. very shortly and skeeter mm. lewis says my partner no sorry my wife penelope says don't forget advice on stuffing advice on stuffing I always make at least two stuffings every Christmas. This Christmas I'm making three stuffings because there's only three of us. <laughs> Rick particularly loves a um, 
Chestnut. Am I ever going to remember the word chestnut? <laughs> Sorry, I. Most of my chestnuts, my chestnut experience comes from my French culinary experience. So I call them Marron, which is the French name, and I always forget the name. So I have to keep asking these guys. Um, uh, <laughs> what's the name of that painter? Not, not, not um, the one. Bob that, Ross. Bob Ross. It's like having Bob Ross in the background. <laughs> 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 or, or, or sadly, <laughs> sadly, a little bit like having Rolf Harris. Uh, <laughs> 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 Let's not go there. Let's not go there. <laughs> Carry on with your tales about stuffing. So I always like to make at least two stuffings, and I usually make my stuffings with uh, good quality sausage meat, bread, homemade breadcrumbs. We've actually got. We couldn't get breadcrumbs, so we actually just got a loaf of bread, which we've sliced up and we're drying out, uh, drying out the pieces, and we whisk them up in um, in, a, in a food processor uh, when we need them. So yeah, if you need breadcrumbs, by the way, just any bread, just leave it out on the side until it's gone completely dry and breadcrumb it up. Uh, so some breadcrumbs, some seasoning, uh, maybe some sage, maybe some uh, a little bit of onion in there, but fresh. Um, uh, pork sausage meat, breadcrumbs, cranberries, um, and just make up a, a simple stuffing. Lay it in a in a tray in a little uh, glass a Pyrex bowl, but not too deep, because if you're anything like me, the top of the stuffing is always the best bit. So, if you're going to make stuffing, don't go really deep with it in the tray because then you'll have a beautiful caramelised top. Everyone will be trying to take it off the top, and underneath you'll have the plain stuffing. So. Lay it out in a big tray and bake it, you know, about maybe three quarters of an inch deep. Then you have, uh, as it caramelizes, you get beautiful sort of uh, caramelized stuffing. So I would make um, a cranberry. Michelle was telling me about the dog biscuits. I've got to keep an eye on that. How long have they been in that? Oh, 20 minutes. <laughs> um, I make a sage and onion stuffing, which again is, is really just... just onions and breadcrumbs and sage and... Um, I, I still would use sausage meat. I also make a one with, which is heavy in cranberries, which also can have um, nuts in it. apricots and nuts mixed in with it. And this uh, time, because I'm in the UK and I haven't had it for since I was a kid, I've also got a box of Paxo stuff in which I'm going to make up a big tray of as well. Paxo. Yeah, Ben says oven, Steve, oven. <laughs> They're done, but but not overdone. Prisoners thirty three two says hi. And Shalama says, I'm doing a £10 turkey in my new tabletop roaster. It's like a big crock pot about the size of a baby's bath. Turkey will be juicy. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Um, so, let me just get my cookies and, and off. Somebody was asking whether you were going to eat on the live, and Ben says, the real test for a good dog treat is for Steve to try it, of course. Absolutely, and I'm happy to try it. I'm just going to get them off of the tray. Now, what you can do, if you were paying attention, which I wasn't, and you'll just see here, these doggy, little doggy biscuits, they're just starting to brown on the outside, just here, you see? And I don't particularly want them to get any browner, so I'm taking them off the baking tray because the baking tray is super hot. And what will happen if I leave them on there, they'll overcook. So I'm getting them off the tray, putting them onto a cooling rack. But if you were paying attention, turn the oven off before they're cooked open the door and let them finish cooling down in the oven. That way even more of the moisture will come out of the cookies, they'll be even crisper. And for dogs, that's a good thing, right? Um, ben says, have you not got a dog taste tester right now, Steve? We, we've got a, a, um, a dog I, I can call over. Um, uh, Rick, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you, Mother>. <laughs> <laughs> they actually smell really nice. Actually, <laughs> they do. We've got Ben said, that's horrendous. <laughs> some of Rick's neighbours have got dogs, and we will actually, but it's late at night now, so we can't go around testing uh, dogs. And lots of Rick's friends have got dogs, so we will, they will be going to a good cause. But I just want to I'll show you them, and actually I will be trying them for you. Uh, little, little Dash Hound. Cool as he. He's cute, isn't he? So Little Dash Hound cookies. Can you imagine, you take these, little homemade... Doggy, doggy biscuits, put them into a, a Christmas stocking or a bag and give them to a friend who's got, who's got pets. Ben says they'll go for a good cause if Steve and Rick don't eat them all beforehand. Mm. And Gordon says, how many eggs do you use for Yorkshires? 
Uh, Gordon, off the top of my head, I haven't made Yorkshire's for a long time, um, but I tend to, it depends, well, it does depend on how much batter you're making up. Um, but I need to, I, I have online all my recipes written down, so I just have to double check on how many eggs I would be using. But it's been a long, how long, how long since we've been home making Yorkshire's? 18 months. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I think I go fairly heavy on the Yorkshire's, uh, on, mm -hmm. on the eggs uh, for mine, but you can't go too heavy, otherwise they won't rise. You know, you, if you go too heavy, um, you'll end up with them, you know, because they're weighted. They're actually like adding a, uh, adding butter into a, a bread flour. They weight down the flour, so you've got to be careful that uh, you don't overdo it and just end up with basically a, no, an omelette. Mm. Mm. <laughs> So, how many do you use, Gordon? <laughs> but also, you'd have to. It means nothing unless you tell me how much uh, how much liquid you use. And do you use milk or only water? Because a lot how of people, much flour you use. <laughs> a lot of people only use water. A lot of I think my grandmother only used water, but I tend to add a little bit of milk in with mine. Um, all I want at the end of the day, just have a look at my recipe, Michelle. I've actually got a recipe for perfect Yorkshire puddings on Steve's Kitchen site. So that recipe is there. Also, you can check that out. Did we find out? Any, did anyone else uh, chip in as to what they were having for Christmas dinner? Um, no, I think I said to everybody what everybody was doing. Um, okay, so um, th that one's in cups. That's why we've done a cup, a cup of self-raising flour, a cup of milk, and four average-sized eggs. So four eggs, fair, fair, he fairly heavy. But you can check out. I'll leave the link down below if you if you want to um, if you want to check it out. Rick, you, oh no, would you would you? Pinch me one of those, you know the little stockings down there? There's one there just for you. Oh, Michelle's got I, one for I've already done right. it. Okay, please forgive me, Damon. This is a little stocking that Damon gave me with a gift in the other day. So, um, we are going to actually... That was just a bag to put them into, okay. so it doesn't make the stocking dirty. All right. <laughs> she thinks of everything, Michelle. So, Ben, thank you very much for putting that link up. And Mandy says, add beer to the batter, lush. I uh, can do. I... I tend not to mess around with Yorkshire batters. I use my old recipe that's worked time and time again, mainly because it's really, it's really important at Christmas that you have good Yorkshire puddings and you don't want to mess them up. You do have to, to get really good Yorkshire puddings, and I'll be making them this year with, with the duck fat as well. Um, you do have to heat the fat. So in the little Yorkshire pudding basins, you have to heat the fat till it's spitting hot. Um, and then when you put the Yorkshire batter into there, uh, they will start to rise almost instantly. Get them straight back in the oven, and, and the heat of the oil will push the uh, push the Yorkshire puddings up, uh, give you beautiful rise, cut shaped Yorkshire puddings. Or you can do what my grandparents used to do, which was to make a Yorkshire pudding in a big uh, square baking tray that you do the roast joint in and get all the flavours from the meat which uh, and there's is Mandy also says really red good. hot fat she agrees with you absolutely and it's got to be red hot Ben says oh I want Yorkshire puddings now so now these have already cooled down let me just get a little handful of them there for you cooled down enough little doppy treats look at that how cool is that one two three four they are still a little bit hot actually this is burning my hand <laughs> little little doggy Doggy treats. Whoops! See that one dropped. Didn't break. It's firm enough. Uh, is it going to be have a crack yet? No. Ooh, still, still a little still bit warm. A little bit warm. But whilst I've got that one broken, I can show you. Just a minute. Let's get a little bit of uh, a little bit of cheese. There's a crumb there. That ends a little bit of uh, pilgrims. So. You can take. Rick, do you want to have a little piece? Yeah, go on then. Go on then. Let's do so, it. So, on camera, just to show you that we don't give our doggies any rubbish. Mm -hmm. Oh, still too warm. They're quite nice. Nice, warm. huh? They're nice warm. Mm. They're like oat crackers, but just no sweetness on them. Like Scottish oat cakes, which mm. don't have a lot of sweetness in them anyway. Mm. But, on Christmas Day, mm. if you a little bit of cheese, which your dog will love also. A little doggy, little doggy cracker. They're still too hot. Mm. Pop a little bit of cheese on top. <laughs> ben says, what did you have today? Oh, just some dog biscuits with a slice of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And wine. Ah, and, and red wine, wine. Look, yeah, cheese and wine. <laughs> ah. 
Okay. Rick, try mm. that. Yeah, I've got. Oh, got a bit too. A little bit of cheese with it. Mm -hmm. Just like any beautiful cracker, yeah? Mm -hmm. So Sue said, had a cheese hamper delivered today with biscuits, chutney, and two bottles of red wine. Nice. Delish. Mm. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Oh, this wine, this wine's nice, isn't it? I'll have a bit of cheese on mine. I'll have that one there. <clears throat> okay, let me just get that a bit of cheese, sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you. A little bit of cheese. Gotta have cheese with it. I don't think any dogs are going to get these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it, there'll be friends of Rick coming around. I saw you making doggy biscuits yesterday. I thought I'd come around because I think maybe you, you'd spare them for us. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, actually, they've all gone. <laughs> we ate them. We ate them last night with some cheese and wine. Mm. They are good. Absolutely fine. Really good. A little bit of cheese, Rick. I'll get you another bit. Okay, yeah. Thank you. So they're probably cool enough to pop into your little stocking now to make mm -hmm. it look good. So, they need to cool right down. How did Michelle's give me a, a puzzle? <laughs> oh, I don't mind. Let's just put them in the no, stocking. No, no, no. Let it so you can seal it. Okay. So the doggies can't get them out. Okay. So take your little doggy treats, little to doggy crackers, and put them into a bag. These are still hot. Don't do it while they're hot. <laughs> Now, whoops, pop them into the bag, let's put another one in there. Take yourself a pretty little stocking like this. Thank you, Damon. <laughs> Seal them up so that they're nice and crisp on Christmas Day. Take your little dash hound, sit him in the top. Your little fire hydrant, sit him in the top as well. Whoops, I'm, facing, I'm making it look pretty for me instead of for you. And you can hang, you can hang that up on your Christmas tree for your beautiful four-legged friend on Christmas Day. Gonna love it. If you've any other treats, you can put there. In. We we probably should maybe do a series on dog treats. It would be do. kind of fun. Mm. So hang that on, on out of dog's reach, <laughs> and hopefully when you come down on Christmas Day, Michelle, you. you Got it. Sorry, I've got a post for a photo. Oh, sorry, it's too dark. Oh, hang on, there we go. I'll get Rick to do a photo. He's always does a... Have you got your camera with you, Rick? Uh, yeah. We'll put this up on Facebook for you. Rick's very good with the old... Um, the old... Uh, Insta He's getting into his Instagram. Check out his Instagram <laughs> channel. Let's get a bit of depth of field on you. Uh, there we go. Beautiful. And three, two, one. Watch the birdie. <laughs> Smile. Smile for Put the camera. Sorry, sorry yeah. everybody. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let, me, let me zoom out a bit. Alright, one more. Three, two, one. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Stuff like that. And the other thing you can you can do is take these little round ones that we made. So they're not wasted. Take the little round ones. And when you go out with your dog, pop them into your pocket, maybe in a little bag as well. You can, they won't break up. They won't break up, they'll stay whole. And you've got nice little treats with peanut butter. Uh, apple sauce in there as well, um, a little bit of uh, the coconut oil, they taste absolutely delicious. You take a little packet of those, take them out, treat some dogs, even if you haven't got a dog with you. Michelle and I walked from John O'Groats to Land's End, 1,200 miles, nearly 2,000 kilometres. We walked from John O'Groats to Land's End and I almost always had some dog treats in my pocket and when we met people walking with their dogs we would you know if we got chatting to them we would have a treat for the dog so you know you don't have to do have a dog with you it also is a great way of sort of getting a conversation yeah going yeah so well, that's, that's the doggies um being fed can we try the mince pies now yes <laughs> now the doggies are being fed rick how are we doing with the mince pies mate michelle are you going to come around and yes so join us? i'm having breakfast here in los angeles lipton tea with am biscotti from trader joe beautiful oh trader joe's haven't like been trader there for a long time we yeah. do like trader joe's like mm. part of audi and little now though i think <laughs> they can't see them mm -hmm. so hang on rick's right mm. oh there's one missing yeah <laughs> i have i have they are here look oh yes <laughs> so which one are you going for rick i'll just have this one I'll go with this one here. 
Now you can't see us. <laughs> can't see the real taste test. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Very nice. Are we all going to eat at the same time so no one can talk? Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Mm. Thank you, Rick, for doing these. You, you really That's are right. getting a masterful at making these, mate. Right? Oh. Thank you for showing me how to. Yeah. Really good. Homemade mince meat, homemade doggy treats, um, Christmas coming up. We've are we, we might do a live on Christmas Day. We might. It depends. We might. depends, it depends how, on, on, how, it goes. on how, how the day goes. <laughs> how full we feel. <laughs> we might even do a longish one doing the cooking and things if I feel up to it. But we'll see. Uh, we'll wait I, I, and see. You, we, we, technically, we shouldn't be doing You guys can go for mm. it if you want. Mm. Um, <laughs> they're leaving me on my own to, to make a mess of myself. I'm going back to the comments. <laughs> Rick's going back to his comments. You're going, Michelle's going back to hers. I'm going to sit here and I don't care. I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. everybody's just watching us eat and not typing. Merry Christmas, everyone, says Shalimar. Oh, yeah, they're good. They are they're very good, good. Mm. yes. Even mm. if he says so himself. He so <laughs> These are lovely, light and crispy, buttery, um, mincemeat inside. A homemade mincemeat. This, these ones have actually got uh, suet in them, so they've got all the extra flavour. Mm. They are good. Mm -hmm. oh. <clears throat> Looks good. Mary says, Jesus bless everyone. Thank you, Mary. Um, yeah, what can I say? Have we finished? I think we're done. We're pretty much done. Look at that, dog biscuits and mince pies. All made in one live show. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Ben, for spurring me on to uh, get those dog biscuits done today. Um, I hope you had some fun. I hope you'll give it a try because actually they're so easy to make. Yeah, you can make ben says big batches. Made the video. You can make big batches of these. You can be creative with different um, dog-friendly vegetables and fruits in them. Um, trust me. Though I haven't got a dog, and I wish I had a dog here to show you, they would lap these up. They absolutely love these little biscuits. Um, and we, we will demonstrate that to ourselves over the next coming days. Have a lovely Christmas Eve. Have a lovely uh, Christmas. We'll try and see if we can on Christmas Day. Um, I know there's all sorts of restrictions. I shouldn't really even bring it up, really, yeah. should I? No. So go on, do like Get on and Merry enjoy Christmas. yourself. Just get on and enjoy yourself. Don't, Joe says they look don't. great. Sue says enjoy yourself this coming Christmas. Sean says Merry Christmas. And Ben says Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Love to you all. Take care. <laughs>